working together is a very important behavior. They are a con, so any kind of any type of group formation just like this is perfect. Now here at SeaWorld, our killer whales trust us and they take an active role in their health and well-being. Some of the first behaviors that we teach our whales are husbandry or healthcare behaviors. These behaviors are designed specifically to monitor the health of each individual animal. Now in just a moment, you're gonna see our matriarch, Katina, demonstrate a very important husbandry behavior. And all these behaviors are voluntary. Just like we go to the doctor, we participate in our own healthcare. Same with all of our killer whales. So all these husbandry behaviors are conditioned, so our veterinary staff comes out to make sure that our animals are nice and healthy. Now this blue present you're about to see is a very important behavior because this behavior allows us to collect a blood sample from our whales. Just like we go to the doctor, we hold our arm out very still. Our killer whales are conditioned to roll over with that belly towards the sky, just like Tatina's demonstrating, and to hold that tail flute nice and still for us and our veterinary staff. Now if you take a look at the white underside on Katina's tail, you might see the big vein that runs underneath. That's where we collect that blood sample from. We do this with all of our whales about once a month. Not only is this an important health diagnostic, but it is a great way for our trainers to build a relationship with our whales. Now another important health diagnostic we get from our whales is a weight. Just like you and I might step on a scale either at home or in the doctor's office, all of our killer whales are conditioned to slide up onto a killer whale size scale that we have in an adjacent environment. And Katina's demonstrating this for you. Now you will see that a good portion of her body is still in the water. So to get an accurate reading of exactly how much she weighs, we simply ask her to lift that tail up and out of the water. In 1985, Katina made history by having the first killer whale birth ever in a zoological facility in the world. And it was, she was born right here in this front exhibit. Since then, we've had 29 killer whales born under the SeaWorld care. 16 of those killer whales born right here at the SeaWorld. And today, we're excited to announce that we are celebrating one of their birthdays today. On September 18, 2006, Milani was born right here at SeaWorld. We've been honored to be a part of Milani's life, watching her learn, watching her grow, and watching her develop through the years. We are proud to share everything that we've learned in our relationship with her and everything we've learned with these whales with you today. So now, let's take a look at how Nalani came to the world. individual but also as a 
well with her entire pod. Katina is Nalani's mother, so Nalani gets away with a lot since Katina is our matriarch. Just a fancy term for saying that she is in charge. Now you see a couple of our trainers in our slide out right now interacting with Katina, Nalani, and Malia with a couple of different toys. So those are killer whale sized toys. You take a look right there in the middle for Nalani, that happy birthday donut. <laughs> it has some pieces of gelatin on it. So it's very similar to the jello that you or I would eat. There's just no sugar, there's no flavoring, no preservatives in it. It will add a little bit of food coloring, mostly for our own enjoyment. But we put a little bit of food coloring on it and we can glue it to that toy. And what's pretty fun, which Nalani's deciding to share her toy, but sometimes they'll actually push it up against the wall and they'll start to peel all those little gelatin slices off the toy. So it's just another way that we can use to have fun and reinforce our whales. Now Nalani is the first whale that I have got to interact and build a relationship with. And it's honestly just amazing to be able to interact with these animals in general, but to see relationships form with her each of our animal trainer series is just such a gift. We honestly want to thank you for joining us today to celebrate her birthday. Let's hear it one more time for Nalani. Now, Zero's research and observation of the killer whales in our care has shed light on many mysteries about these amazing animals. For example, we know now that the gestation period of a pregnant killer whale is 17 months, information that would be impossible to obtain out the wild. Some information, however, can only be obtained through field observation. SeaWorld works with our partners like their Norwegian Orca Survey and NOAA to help further this knowledge. Killer whales are powerful animals. Perhaps the best expression of this power can be seen when they hunt. Killer whales stand apart. They have no natural predators and just about any other ocean animal can be their dinner. Depending on where they live and their chosen prey, they've developed some epic hunting techniques. Off the coast of South America, killer whales will reach themselves, riding in on waves just long enough to catch prey. Also create waves that knock animals like penguins or seals from icicles. Most importantly, they cooperate, communicate, and coordinate as a team. Here's footage of killer whales corralling a school of herring. A whale dips in and feeds, while the other whales keep the fish together with spikes on their tail. So killer whales create waves to hunt, and they use those powerful flukes to stun their prey. You're about to see a demonstration. For our whales, it's a fun activity session, but for all of you, it means it's time to get wet!
some killer whale populations. Killer whales are impressive animals, and it's pretty obvious why they're the top predator in the ocean. That means killer whales are invincible, right?